going on YouTube? Kagan fishing out here, down at St. Bernard River again. That last time Tom and I were out here, we were able to find some tailing reds. And so uh, since this connects to the Gulf, I figured since we got all that rain from Tropical Storm Irma, that this would be the saltiest spot. And uh, you know, the saltier the water, most of the time, the more saltwater species you're gonna catch. Not always, but I figured that uh, especially there's a good protected marsh area and a good sand bank that's protected because the winds are like 14 miles an hour out of the southeast. They're definitely not slack today. It's pretty calm. It's pretty calm out here uh, in the protected areas. Now, if you get into more open water, it gets choppy and it gets rough, but I'm going to try and just stealthily paddle up and get on some more tailing redfish. I'm, uh, I think I'm addicted to trying to catch tailing redfish. It's more of a hunt, and I definitely enjoy that aspect of it. Let's get on some fish, guys. Ugh. All right, guys, so I've seen me use the hunchback a lot, and recently it's just been on fire. The hunchback has just been a redfish getter, so that's what I'm gonna start with today. Take a couple chunks just in this little open area. It drops off to some deeper water in here, and it's an outgoing tide. So, you know, this marsh drains pretty fast. Oh, that was a good swirl. It feels so nice being out and not being chased by a storm or running from a storm or in the middle of a storm. So this is definitely already a plus that I'm enjoying. All right, guys, so we're over here. We're down by the coast. Man, the surf is rough. Without a doubt, the surf is pumping through. But I'm just back on this little flounder spot that I found last time. And I'm gonna see if I can pick up a flounder, maybe a trout. So all this water coming through here is probably pretty darn fresh and that's why it's pumping so hard. But the best part is that uh, flounder, you know, they're not very skittish to brackish water. And so that's one of my tactics right now is I'm gonna really kind of go for some flounder. I'm pretty much throwing up current Bouncing my lure along the bottom. So I went ahead and beached the solo skip. There's a good current ripping through here. I caught a flounder last time right in this exact spot. So I went ahead and put on the white gulp. I'm gonna to toss out and I'm just gonna work this whole shoreline. So it's a good steep drop right off the edge. Oh, there's one. Ah, dang. Should have let him eat longer. He was nibbling. Dang it, man. All right, well, cool. There's flounder here. Oh, there's another one. All right, I'm gonna let this guy eat. All right, I'm letting him eat. I'm letting him eat. Let him eat, let him eat, let him eat. All right, still on. Let him eat. It's hard to be patient with these flounder, man. It's really hard to be patient with these flounder. Alright, if I feel him again, I'm gonna go ahead and set that. Uh, I think he let go. Oh, dude. Oh, I even let him eat. I let him eat. Sure enough, guys, look. Flounder teeth, flounder teeth, flounder teeth. Dang, man. All right, guys, while I'm out over here, uh, I went back towards the boat launch. Just a little, you know, some marsh drains that dump out into the intercoastal. It always looked pretty good. Last time Tom and I were out here, we gave it a shot. Uh, but then we started getting rained on, so we had to bail. But it's a pretty day today, so I'm gonna see if there's anything lurking around in here.
<laughs> and look at that big old crab. Let go of my lure, guy. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go, that's a solid fish. Ooh, is that a red? Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Sick. And you're just sitting right there too, huh? Solid fish. Really good fish. Nope, don't go around the power pole. Nope. Okay. Awesome. Oh, come on, dude. Get away from there. Man, that's a strong guy. He's not that big, but man, he's got some fight in him. That is for sure. Boom. There we go. Awesome. Redfish one of the day. Oh, come here, guy. Ooh, there we go. Gave you a little lip piercing right there. I did, I did. Awesome. Pretty fish. Let's see what he measures out. Let's see what he measures. 23 and three quarters close to 24 it's like a he's a little more than three quarters but man beautiful fish it took me a while to find him a big old spot on that guy all right guys fish one of the day it's late and it took me a while to find a fish but found it tides going out it was ripping too hard over there so i figured i would come back up in the marsh get back to my roots and sure enough and i nailed a nice size slot red so Fishing day was kind of slow, but I got some really good exploring in, and uh, I still got a slot redfish. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip it out, hot, and I'm gonna put it on the table, fillet it up, and I'm gonna do a little catch and cook for you guys tonight. I've got a secret recipe. So shout out Haley Davis for giving me this pesto redfish recipe. It's pretty interesting. Uh, I've never had it before, but she said it is like redfish pizza, and. I'm a fan of pizza. I'm pretty sure you're a fan of pizza. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do this. It's like so, you just have a perfect shell. Gotta get these rib bones out. Nobody likes to eat rib bones. There's actually some bad stories that I know about eating rib bones and getting stuck in their throat. So just make sure you get all the rib bones out. Like so. Guys, and welcome to Kagan's Kitchen. <laughs> Except this time it's an actual kitchen and not just a wood shack out in the bay. What I've got right here, I've got my very cleaned up redfish fillets. They look so delicious. So the wife chopped up some veggies for me while I was on the way home. I got some Brussels sprouts and some sweet potato cubes. With the sides, it's really up to you and what you prefer. Um, the main thing I'm focusing on is the redfish fillets. It's really simple, guys. All you need, some pesto, 
roasted tomato, not the basil pesto. I'd like to try with the basil pesto, but she recommended the roasted tomato, so I just went ahead and went with her recipe. And just some Italian style, five different cheese kind of deal. The main thing is you preheat your oven to 350, and you bake it for 20 minutes. All right, so let's go season these fillets up. You just season to taste at first, so all I'm gonna do, really simple, a little bit of salt, a little bit of coarse ground pepper. I'm gonna throw just a little bit of cayenne on the fish because I like a little bit of heat. Now is the main part. You're gonna take your pesto, and you're just gonna generously spread it over the top. There we go, guys. And there is some delicious pesto redfish. Ready to go in the oven. 20 minutes later. Right, so while those 20 minutes were going on, I had the time to get cleaned up, hop in the shower, change, and now it's time to apply the cheese. It's real simple. You get a bunch of cheese and you just put it on top. Oh, cheese it up. It was something for me. After you put the cheese on, you go back in for 10 minutes on broil to really get that nice brown, crispy cheese layer. Alexa, well, set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. Ooh, look at that deliciousness, guys. The moment of truth is here. Let's take a bite. Let's take a bite. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna scoop the cheese off because I wanna just taste the pesto and the fish. That's good. The red fish, it has that nice, salty, flaky fish that you want. You don't want to eat fish and not realize you're eating fish. Uh, it definitely still has the fish undertone, but oh my gosh, with the cheese. It's a great balance. And the pesto, it just adds that extra little bit on top of the salty fish that you want, and it's amazing. Thanks for watching another episode of Keg and Fishing. And we'll catch you next time. Hey.